Good morning. It's Thursday, August 11th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, A Tale of Two Pities, and our scripture is from the Old Testament, Psalm and Isaiah, and the New Testament, Hebrews. Come back, we beg you, O God of heaven's armies, look down from heaven and see our plight. Take care of this grapevine that you yourself have planted, this sun you have raised for yourself. For we are chopped up and burned by our enemies. May they perish at the sight of your frown. Strengthen the man you love, the son of your choice. Then we will never abandon you again. Revive us so we can call on your name once more. Turn us again to yourself, O Lord God of heaven's armies. Make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. And then Isaiah the prophet. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For the Lord has rejected his people, the descendants of Jacob, because they have filled their land with practices from the east and with sorcerers as the Philistines do. They have made alliances with pagans. Israel is full of silver and gold. There is no end to its treasures. Their land is full of war horses. There is no end to its chariots. Their land is full of idols. The people worship things they have made with their own hands. So now they will be humbled and all will be brought low. Do not forgive them. Crawl into caves in the rocks. Hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. Human pride will be brought down, and human arrogance will be humbled. Only the Lord will be exalted on that day of judgment. And then the New Testament prophet. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The psalmist and the prophet both tell the tale of Israel's political prowess and her inclusive diversity of religious tolerance. They also pity both, because all that power and prayer will come to nothing. They are to be pitied on the day they fall into the hands of an angry God. Shows of religious piety are despicable in heaven. The psalmist, praying for God's strong arm to come defeat their enemies, is hardly more than a show. You cannot hide motive from God. Times used to be good when Israel was the strong new kid on the block, fresh from the concert of Jericho's walls crumbling and Philistine heads rolling. Now the worm is turned and Israel is falling apart on every front. The prophet points to their warhorse military and idols made of stone and wood, solutions Israel counted on in any crisis. Isaiah warns the time was now to dump the idols and ride the horses to caves to hide from their real enemy, God. And the New Testament preacher to God's beloved Hebrew nation reminds them it's a bitter pill being on the wrong side of God's history. Once they were the humble slaves, released from Egyptian bondage, blessed with the might of God's covenant, in a land flowing with milk and honey, and now they are back in bondage, supposedly God's chosen, choosing pagan ways and means to chart their lives. They were proud, arrogant, and a stench in God's holy nostrils. It only takes a brief look at the history of Abraham's descendants to see how judgment falls over and again when people forget God so they can go their own way. In this country, we have a 246-year history. Compared to Israel's 4,000 years since Abraham, we are merely toddlers. But there's a parallel between the two nations that's obvious. We have our war horses, our nuclear-armed drones, and flag-waving parades to sing God Bless America in place of shrines and carved idols. But our motive is identical. Invoke the name of God, and like a magician's spell, all will be well again. In the words of all the other fools of history, yeah, sure, (laughs) that'll work. For you today, It seems our prayers to God to bless us for our righteousness haven't worked all that well. All that's left is the plea of sinners for mercy. 
Time to bend the knee, America. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.